Bienvenidos, señores y señores, to another episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast. This episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting, and it has your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get into the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bo bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. And making a return visit to the carne asada. We're, we're so excited about this. I thought after the first time, he'd be like, I'm not, I'm not going to hang out with those bums anymore. Uh, <laughs> but Ron Say is making yeah. a return visit here. And we're going to be talking about his new book, Penguin Power. Uh, Ron, ¿cómo estás, amigo? Bienvenido. Uh, bien, gracias, Juan. Uh, uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, you know, uh, I've launched my book. It was a two-year process. Uh, I ran into a problem the first year, not only because of the pandemic, in which we had to do 20 hours of Zoom, uh, but my uh, author at that point in time, my writer, uh, beat writer, not beat writer, ghost writer, uh, had a pre-existing condition of cancer. And uh, so it took, uh, uh, took uh, its course and uh, it caused issues down the stretch. So we had to basically uh, box it up. And uh, we took the transcripts. We tried to get something out of that, but uh, it came out real garbled. And uh, the person who was doing it wasn't real familiar with the names and the places. So Kenny and I reorganized, and uh, he is an accomplished uh, journalist, and he's written books before. He was a, a beat writer for us when I uh, in the early '80s, and. Uh, uh, has written for the Dodgers on uh, their network and knows the names and the places and the events and the history and tradition and all that. So it was a perfect match for us. He did a great job of putting pen to paper. So we have come full circle. All right. I, I want to spend a, a lot of time on the book, uh, Ron, but I, I have to be remiss. I want to start with the fact that on June 23rd, is the 50th anniversary of the infield. And for yes, us young viewers who don't know, Ron Say is part of the reason uh, why the major league system for the Dodgers in the 70s was completely decimated. Because <laughs> I, I can't take credit for that, Ron. That's you. I, I stole that line from you because that, that's yeah. a great line there. Yeah. Um, last time you were on the show, Ron, you didn't think it was going to happen, but this time uh, the Dodgers are recognizing you guys before the game on June 23rd against, uh, the hated Houston Astros. The fact that you, for a minute there, you thought it wasn't going to happen and now it, it is happening. Has that, I, I, how does that make you feel? Uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I know that, uh, it was shortly after the podcast that we had done, uh, recognizing the issue that, uh, things started to spin in a different direction. Um, you know, I'm certainly grateful, um, for the opportunity, uh, because I need, I think it needs attention. You know, uh, it is our 50th golden anniversary of the longest running and most successful infield in major league history. This is a gem in the Dodgers hat. How many things in Dodger tradition and history can I remind you of that we fall into that same boat? It falls into the same category of the Dodgers coming to uh, Los Angeles. Uh, uh, you know, uh, that's over 50 years. Uh, Benny's career, 50 years. Uh, Jackie Robinson, over 50 years. Uh, we fit into that category. And uh, I think felt it was necessary and I do feel it's necessary for this to be brought to first full circle because uh, there isn't anything that really compares to all the accomplishments that we had and the fact that we're the nucleus and the backbone of the foundation for uh, for the organization for 10 years and uh, there was uh, it just it just needs to be revisited and I'm glad that they uh, finally decided to do it. So uh, last time you were on the show, Ron, you had told us that your wife had told you that, you know, right after you stopped, well, after you had left the Dodgers, that you should write a book on the infield. <laughs> this book is more than just about the infield. Um, 
what made you actually come to the realization that now was the time I, I'm going to write the book and it's not just going to be about the infield. It's going to be about my life. That was a ghost that just walked into the room, by the way, that you saw <laughs> come in and not announce herself and just walk out. Uh, I suppose uh, it, uh, the prodding over time uh, and the fact that I was trying to deal with some new issues as, you know, I got more older with it. I started to view it a little differently. Um, you know, I was kind of concerned and certainly in today's society where you have, uh, uh, you push a button and, and uh, now you Google someone and now there's information about you that's, you know, hundred pages long. And, you know, it's like, wow, uh, I felt like that was kind of not a place that I wanted to go any more than that, simply because I didn't want necessarily everybody to know everything about me. And, uh, of course that's not going to happen, but, uh, it changed my mind because I had some people who, you know, started to, you know, understand the accomplishments of what we had done together uh, and and that I had a story to tell. And people like to be told stories and they like to be told baseball stories because essentially, you know, uh, a lot of guys in this world grow up playing baseball when they're a kid. And so they know what that feels like. It's a an experience. Uh, everybody probably had an experience with, if not baseball, some sporting event when they were young. And all the teaches that all the things that it teaches you away from your book learning. So there's a balance. It's uh, you know it's practical. It's it's uh, things that you do when you're a kid that teaches you teamwork and discipline and and uh, organization before you even understand it. You know, uh, all of a sudden you're you're pushed into a group of kids who want to play on the same team and you don't know any of them and you've got to try to make that work. And, uh, you do, uh, but it's a learning process. So, uh, along with something that, and plus also the fact that I had a childhood dream that became a reality, I kind of wanted to push the point of saying, you know, follow your dreams. Man. Uh, if you have something that you're really that passionate about, you know, knock down all the obstacles. You know, don't listen to what people are going to say. So what if it's a bigger mountain to climb than some of these other things? Uh, the only way that you're going to be happy about it is if you pursue it and you see it through. You either make it or you've come to a point where saying, hey, I gave it my best shot and I, I couldn't do that. Uh, I, can, I can live with that. But when I get cut short of something, there's always these other people that are going to say, geez, I wish I would have kind of done that more. I wish I would have given myself a chance. So that's kind of what it's saying. You know, I mean, follow it through, um, you know, make, make the effort to make that happen. And you might just, you know, have your dream come true. So I, you had mentioned everything that you went through in the beginning of this book with losing the original ghostwriter that you were going to have. And right. then you end up working with Ken Gurnick. Was there ever a thought on your mind that, I'll just do it myself. I, I don't. I don't need a ghostwriter. I mean, you're a renaissance man, Ron. I mean, you host a podcast. I mean, you can do so many things. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, uh, true. Um, you know, first of all, I wasn't sure whether in the beginning I wanted to the book, uh, but certainly I. I don't think I'm an accomplished uh, journalist, and I really needed to have that on my side of the ledger. Uh, one of the. One of the. Uh, uh, classes that I had uh, that I wasn't so good in was along this area uh, because I really never paid too much attention to it. And I didn't think it would be something practical that I'd be doing. If I had this childhood dream about becoming a baseball player, being a, you know, an accomplished writer was not necessarily in the mix. Uh, but I, I did turn it over to a guy uh, who did a, a tremendous job and he's been working with me diligently about signing and, and things and we're only a week old since this thing broke so uh we're in the uh infantile stage when you talk about where we are in the moment so it's been kind of exciting there's been a lot of things floating around uh i just went on a lana rizzo show this morning uh mlb network um uh, high heat and uh so we're 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 active uh i i appreciate what the uh 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 the uh the triumph books people have been doing on their end and so you know we've got uh, you know signings coming up we're trying to arrange so yeah it's pretty exciting 
So when you're when you're working with someone, I, I mean, what's that process like, Ron? Is is Ken telling you, "Hey, Ron, are you sure you want to put this in the book?" I mean, this this sure. might cause you some grief. Like, how much do you self censor? Like, do you become aware, as a little self conscious of of the things you're telling this person? Uh, yeah. Uh, look, I'm 75. I've been around the block a little bit with this. Um, I understand, uh, there's a time to be, uh, you know, uh, uh it's time to speak up and there's time. To, there, there, it's like being at a party and you're, you're all of a sudden in this conversation that, you know, you know, you don't have any desire to speak to what they're conversing about and you politely excuse yourself. And so that's kind of how it works. But uh, yeah, Kenny has input. He needs to, uh, and he does understand uh, the, uh, the delicacy of it. Um, you know, we, we always deal with, uh, you know, is this going to offend somebody? Um, uh, we had that come up in the book and uh, we spoke about it and we dealt with it. And so um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a process. It's a, uh, um, you know, the fortunate part for me is, is that, you know, Kenny knew a lot of this stuff. You know, he, he was able to fact check everything along with Mark Langell of the Dodgers, uh, their historian. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it was a, a well designed, I believe, process that Kenny put together. And, uh, um, and of course, the editors, uh, uh, additions and subtractions, uh, the pictures, you know, we, uh, we felt we, did a pretty solid job with it and hope that uh, we'll see where it goes. I have no experience of understanding this because I'm, you know, this is a brand new world. So, you know, uh, whatever it is, it is. You know what, Ron, I, you're, you're sitting here and you mentioned it earlier. I, I mean, especially that era, you could probably argue is probably maybe one of the most successful eras of Dodger baseball, that era that you played in. Uh, and a lot of these memories that you have in this book, are they still pretty fresh in your mind? I mean, those are the reasons why you had to censor yourself because as you're talking Tommy Lasorda here and a lot of those Tommy Lasorda stories maybe are not appropriate. <laughs> That's, oh my God, is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, of course, uh, you know, we are in a different time and place. I mean, look at, look what, look what the, uh, the, do you think the honeymooners would be on television today? Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, look, they thought it was great stuff back then. I remember watching it. I, I, I wasn't nearly as offended as I might be today, uh, based on where we've come with all, you know, the, the rights and things and how people understand things and take things and are so sensitive to things today. And, you know, they're trying to re they're trying to erase history in Florida. So, I mean, you know, who knows where things are going these days? Uh, but certainly uh, you do have to be careful. And uh, uh, and we did the best we could. With that. Um, Dave Stewart, we had Dave Stewart on the show and he was telling us about Fernando Mania. And I know you address it in your book. Um, I'm curious from your guys's perspective, you guys on the field. Because Dave Stewart was telling us that it was even when you guys were on the road, it was crazy. I mean, at, at a certain point, did you guys just go, God, man, this is just, I'm over this. Can we just play the game? Why do we, I didn't sign up for this. Um, you, you know, uh, that, it, 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 it doesn't kind of happen that way, at least not for me. Uh, there's no way that you can control you know what's happening out here you just kind of have to get into the flow and see where you fit in i i think uh uh you know dave's comments are are appropriate uh but i have to go back a, a little bit in front of this um i give all due credit to fernando for the the extra people and the attention that he brought to the ballpark and to the dodgers and to baseball but a lot of this we'd already been through. It wasn't Fernando Mania. It was what we were doing. And what we were doing is we were we drew three million attendance for the first time in major league history before Fernando got there. We were drawing three million people. We were leading the league in attendance. We were also leading the league in attendance on the road. That's a double. So 
maybe Dave, because he wasn't there at the beginning of all of this, came in at some point, saw it a little differently. And uh, yes, we saw it differently because, you know, now we have the probably the first Hispanic player of magnitude uh, who Walter O'Malley would have loved to have seen, uh, but passed away, I think a year or so before he got there. And I think this was probably one of his dreams of coming. He had great insight about things. You know, he, he I'm pretty sure that he understood how the population, the, the Hispanic population could, you know, flood Dodger Stadium. And if we ever had a player of magnitude of such, you know, how much importance that would be. But we already established a lot of that. And and basically, Fernando added to that. Uh, Ron, I have to tell you, uh, I, the book has just been out a week, okay? And I have a friend who got his hands on the book and read it. And he's a big fan of yours, right? And he told me, and I think this is a tribute to your book. He's like, I'm still surprised how much I liked it. I knew I was going <laughs> to like it. But reading it, I'm like, I, I really... I love this book. And one of the things he was telling me is how you talked about Jaime Harin. And he yeah. was just like, he feels that not enough people, obviously Vince Scully is, is great, but then he feels everyone recognizes that Jaime Harin is great, but that somehow Jaime Harin has not gotten his due. It, was it important for you to, to include stories about Harin in your book? Um, yeah, I do because, you know, he was part of that as well. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, lived outside of that, you know, for a long time as well because I mean, and then he continued to broadcast well after I was finished and, you know, Jaime's still chugging away and, you know, Jaime's over here and then he's up here and it's like, you know, what the Dodgers and angels have been, you know, for a long time. And I'm not saying it, it exists today. But it's kind of referred to as the Dodgers and the Angels, you know, mm. like the sister, you know, uh -huh. in town or whatever, you know. And I and I felt like, uh, you know, there's there's that's not fair, you know. Um, and, and Jaime actually was the the first person that I had on my podcast show, and so I, you know, I wanted to open up, open it up to, you know, uh, on a multiple level, you know, I've got a. Hispanic Hall of Fame broadcaster, so I'm going to get a baseball audience. I'm going to get prestige brought to it. I'm going to have possibly a, 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 um, a Hispanic audience now uh, join watching the podcast. And we've got a lot of comedians that were Hispanics. We've tried to mix it up. Mix it up. We're an eclectic show. Uh, I had Billie Jean King on here uh, last week. I had uh, Ann Myers Drysdale. I've had Corey Clotes. Uh, the UCLA women's basketball coach on. Uh, I'm still looking for others, but I, I try to have a mix. Uh, I've had Reggie Smith. I've had uh, 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 Mike Sosha, Bill Russell, uh, um, uh, and others that I can't remember right now. But, you know, I've got a mix going, and uh, uh, it, it's a lot of fun to do. The business side of it, eh, not so much. <laughs> but uh, just doing the interviews and talking over things with guys, uh, you know, and I'm actually I'm having Sean Green on two weeks from now. And uh, so it's um, I tried to have a Dodger flavor, but there are going to be other players on uh, and other people uh, from other places. But uh, it's taking a while to build this thing. And uh, it's been fun so far. So <laughs> Look, th this is the reason why I say not only is he a renaissance man, but for those of you watching the show, you can see the angelic glow uh, above Ron's head. <laughs> that's um, not intentional, folks. <laughs> I, I mean, no, that's, I, just... I, that's funny, uh, actually. Uh, that's it's not I'm not uh, I don't have a halo on there, guys. I, not, <laughs> I promise you I do not have a halo. So, uh, Ron, uh, where can people find the book? I, is, I mean, obvious. Is it the usual okay. suspects go to Amazon or, or are there other sources? Yes, uh, there will be. Um, I, I am finalizing my uh, website uh, as we speak. And I will have a place where you can go to a link on my website that will, you will be able to purchase the book uh, with the options available. It's not up yet. Currently, it is on Amazon. Uh, uh, a month ago, there were pre-orders available, but it's launched and it's out there. Uh, lots of Barnes and Noble stores, I guess, are carrying it. 
Um, funny thing about Barnes and Noble, they're not doing book signings, which is a disappointment, you know. So, uh, I think that came, uh, came about by the way of, uh, you know, the pandemic. So mm. uh, a lot of things changed back then, but hopefully, you know, we'll, we've had, uh, lots of, lots of Instagram requests of, you know, going here, there and wherever. And so I'm, we're following up with that, see, uh, how serious it is that they want to try and make this happen. So. Uh, like I said, brand new world. Uh, there will not be a, a book signing at Dodger Stadium. Um, the editor, uh, our, our publisher, uh, reached out to the Dodgers here, I think before the, yeah, it was uh, maybe within the last month and, uh, we got turned down. Wow. The, the, the Dodgers have just not been, uh, too, too kind lately, have they? Uh, well, listen, I, I, they, their policy said that, uh, they don't do book, book signings, uh, well, and they don't carry books in the stadium. So that was their official response. And, uh, so we'll, we'll have to live with it. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Ron. Um, Ron, I do want to thank you, though, before we end the show, because uh, you told me about the Burrito King last time you were on the show. <laughs> and I, I left Dodger yeah. Stadium a couple of weeks ago, and I went the opposite direction that I didn't go. And I saw the Burrito King. And I was right. just like, hey, Ron says it's the Burrito King. So yeah. the, the Burrito King is still there. So thank you for the recommendation. For our listeners, our viewers, the book is called Penguin Power. It's a must-have for all Dodger fans. It's a must-have for people who love baseball. Because like Ron says, the Dodgers are a huge part of history in baseball. He had already given you the examples. But in particular, his era. Uh, maybe you don't toot your horn enough, Ron. But I mean, when you look back at it, you guys were pretty successful for a decade. And maybe the Atlanta Braves are the only other team that maybe can say that. Uh, yeah, but that's a mix. Uh, it's a mix and, and certainly they did. And they had some, you know, terrific players, you know, Hall of Fame pitchers and everything there. They had a lot, a lot to offer. Uh, and they're pretty good right now, too. Uh, yeah. I, I still think they're the team to beat in the National League, but, uh, the, the, the season will play out and it'll shape up as it does. But, uh, yes, we did. We, uh, we, we, uh, the reason I'm so proud of it is that we had a lot on our plate. Uh, they handed down a lot of it and, uh, we understood and our guys were able to accept the challenges and responsibilities and uh, carve our own Dodger history into the great history and tradition of the entire organization. So yeah, we left, uh, we, we, we left a, a, a big accomplishment period there. And I, I'm so glad that we were able to add to the history and tradition. Uh, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. I have to take advantage of your baseball expertise, Ron. Uh, the Dodgers bullpen is going through it right now, and fans are having a meltdown. Have you? Did you guys ever experience a stretch like this where, let's just say, the pitching was not up to par, and you guys are on the field are just like, really, guys? Can you? I mean, how many runs do we have to score for you guys? Uh, it, you know, at, unfortunately, at times, I think it happens on teams that aren't so good, uh, where. You know, you, uh, you're getting beat eight to one and, uh, uh, it's like, uh, you know, you get beat, you get, eight, you get beat eight to seven and, uh, it's like, okay, we, we got now, you know, now, would you guys try to get somebody out here? If we're scoring seven runs, you know, <laughs> uh, we should be winning ball games. Right. And you know, when you win seven to two, Hey, plenty of hitting, plenty of pitching, plenty of defense, everything's cool. And, you know, when it, when you get, get on a losing streak and, and, you know, your, your, your pitchers are, you know, losing, you know, games two to one, uh, there's a little bit of that too. Come on, guys, you need to score some runs. Uh, you know, I'm pitching my uh, rear end off here and I need, uh, I remember Bert Hooten come through and it didn't, it didn't come off very well, but, you know, he just started trying to, you guys, you guys think about scoring some runs tonight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, and in the moment, you kind of have to laugh at it. But of course, somebody's also going to say, Hey, Bert, just shut up and pitch. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it go, it goes around. Fortunately, you know, our pitching staff, you know, we, we, it, the amazing thing about our era of pitching is that it did in line with all the other historical stuff that Dodger pitching had done over their careers. 
And, you know, we had two different times, two different years. Uh, you can please fact check this. Uh, we had an earned run average, staff earned run, run uh, excuse me, staff earned run average of 2.91 and 2.97, I believe, two different years. Our entire staff was under three. You don't have too many individual pitchers today that are under three. That's right. Okay. Our staff, I mean, it, it blew me away when I saw this. Normally, we're sitting a little above three, you know, like three and one. But, you know, a bad year was like 3.4. And when we had a really bad year in 1979, uh, it was all the way up to 3.7, I think. Where would 3.7 be to be, to be today? And be so bad. Uh, uh, I don't know. But all I can tell you is, you know, our, our pitching, our history of pitching here, uh, the coach pitching staff and the players that we had did an amazing job. To have an earned run average of under three, two different times in a 10 year period was fantastic. Uh, Ron, did you guys have slump busters back then? I mean, I've heard the stories of sacrificing chickens or, or whatever. No. I, I mean, is that a, is that no. a myth or slump busters uh, real? Oh, no, I, I think slump busters are probably real, but, you know, we uh, weren't beheading animals uh, back then <laughs> uh, to, to get rid of the curse. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, you know, uh, I, a lot, when I, when I uh, stopped a hitting streak, I switched bats, uh, the models. And uh, sometimes if I, uh, you know, when I make an error, or something, I might change my shoes for the next night. Just to, you know, say, hey, let's get a clean slate on, get a new pair of shoes on. I had to alternate them anyway. Uh, but some when you get in a hot streak, too, you also, you know, kind of like to say, hey, let's repeat that. So you start wearing that same shirt underneath or whatever it was. Uh, you don't mix it up as much. And uh, there is a point about a Superman feature in the book that I wrote about, which is, uh, it's an incredible story. And I won't get into it, so read the book. But uh, uh, the uh, guys are superstitious. And I heard one of the uh, guys that was one of the all-time worst guys for this was Jeff Hamilton, a kid that played third base for uh, yeah, I remember in, in the, in the eight, late 80s. And apparently, I mean, everything in his locker was perfectly aligned. I mean, he knew when one shirt was out of place, one glove was out of place. And he walked to the plate every single night the same way, went up the steps, left, right, not right, left, left, right, and did all these things. And I'm saying, oh, my God, if if I had known that he was this superstitious about stuff, I could ruin his day in a heartbeat, <laughs> you know. And, and it, I mean, it was just amazing. I'm saying, my God, one, one little thing got out of place, and it might say, oh, I'm ruined for the night. <laughs> so anyway, it was just something to play with. But uh, I'm glad that I wasn't in that era. Uh, you know, we had guys that, uh, you know, had short memories. Uh, we had an everyday and, uh, you know, whatever happened last night, it's a new start. Uh, we know we've got a big old blue bullseye on our forehead every night and for a lot of reasons. And one of those was the KO2 airplane. When everybody else was flying commercial back then, we were flying our own private plane. And believe me, that got a lot of attention. <laughs> well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ron Say just gave you guys a master class on promoting a book because he didn't give away any of the good stuff. So you got to go buy the book, which is Penguin Power. You can get it in Amazon. Where can they follow you on the social media, Ron? Oh, I'm on Instagram. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I, you know, maybe the podcast will demand uh, us to go to Twitter, uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. Plus, we're working without a website right now, so that makes it difficult. And, you know, we're in dire need to get that up because it controls the, uh, the, the, the centrics of everything that we're doing. Ron, I could talk to you forever, but I know you're a busy man. You got to sell books. Writing the book is just half the job. Now you got to go over there and uh, sing for your supper. So thank you for the time you've given us. And I really appreciate you guys' work. Uh, thank you, Juan, for having me again. I uh, love to do it again. You're welcome. So we're here with uh, Bill Russell, the famous infield on the 50th anniversary of the infield. So, so Bill, um, first thing, thanks for joining us. We're the Bleedos Podcast. And We've been once we heard about this celebration, you know, we 
we wanted to do our part and be a part of it because uh, a lot of us grew up on on you guys. So, what's it like for you to come back for this uh, 50th anniversary? Well, it's always nice to come back to let just say beautiful Dodger Stadium. And if you've been here, you know it's beautiful. It's the third oldest stadium in, in the major leagues, and it's just a beautiful place to come and bring your family. But it brings back so many memories. Uh, it all started here in the late 60s and went on to the late 80s. So it was just a good run that we all had. The four guys came together 50 years ago. So where has time gone? That's what you can say. So it's just good to see the Ron and Steve here. Davey's back east. Uh, he's doing good. But uh, to reminisce and look at each other and say the same thing I just said. Where has the time gone? I mean, when, when you guys first got together, right, in 73, I mean, did you have any idea, like, that it was, it was going to be that special, something that special? No, you, do, you don't at the time. There's no way that you could. You're just happy to be playing in the major leagues. And, and, uh, and the bottom line is you have to produce. And, and we produced and won so many games, played so many great games here at Dodger Stadium. And, uh, you know, from All-Star game to World Series games to playoff games, uh, big games that we won in, in later innings of the, of the game. And so it's just uh, so many memories that you have. Yeah, you know, when you play 162 games, just think 162 games. You obviously got to be young to do that for the traveling and everything that goes on. But uh, we were very successful. You don't think about it at the time. You think about going out there and do your job and try to win the game. I mean, you were the most successful infield. I mean, not just just saying it. I mean, you were, I mean, you know, what, eight years, right? Eight-year run. I mean, right. other yeah. other infields, what, maybe half of that, right? I mean, I don't exactly. think there's ever been another... another like I don't think there will be because of free agency. Well, so much of a turnover nowadays. But back then, you know, as I said, we, we, we came together. We were very fortunate to be in an organization uh, that kept us together for eight and a half years. It ended in 81 when Steve Sachs came on board. But prior to that, uh, you know, it was just fun to play together. And like I said, in order to stay together, you had to produce, you had to win. And we did all that. So did um. As far as um, the group, like being together, like oh, yeah. I mean, how many all- how many All Star games were you in? Right, you guys had multiple All Stars, yeah. right? You, yeah. Multiple All Stars. David Lopes and multiple All Stars. Right. Um, and then, so when you first heard about this happening tonight, uh, did you think it was going to happen? Because there was a time where it wasn't it wasn't on the calendar. Well, I heard about it a couple months ago. They asked if you're available, and there's no question that. Uh, I was, and, and of course we all were, but, uh, you know, you, when, once that was mentioned, to come here and throw out the first pitch to honor the, uh, for over 50 years ago, and it's hard to believe, but, you know, you, you sat awake, and I did, before I went to sleep, you know, the last few weeks, you lay in bed, and you say, you, you reminisce about all the experiences you went through, or you think about what each other, it meant to play with each other, the things that... Uh, that went on, you know, like I said, the, world, the great World Series games, and, and it all ended in 81, but finally we beat the Yankees, which beat us in 77, 78, and we, you know, it's not everybody gets a chance to play in the World Series, but we did four times, and 81 was our last time together, and it ended up on a great note, uh, because we ended up uh, our run together, uh, winning 81 World Series and beating the Yankees. So what, what are you doing like these days now? Not involved much in I work for Major League Baseball. I'm an umpire observer, so I come out to all the Dodger games on the weekends and watch the umpires. Okay, so it keeps me busy. It gives me something to do during the baseball season. Okay, so you're still in L.A.? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that, since you're in L.A. all the time, we're, we're a big, uh, we obviously cover the Dodgers. We're big on tacos. We love tacos. So one more thing we ask all our guests. No, I would like what? Tacos. Tacos? So yeah. Do you, do, you, do you like tacos, and is there one taco that is like your go-to order? I like to go to taco, and I usually get the uh, soft taco with the uh, chicken soft taco. Okay. Uh, I put my own hot sauce on it. I don't want to put there any special sauce on so I use my own soft sauce. And they're, they're good to eat. They're not too filling, and they're not too fattening. So <laughs> Where is that? It's great. Is there a specific place to get that? It, no, it's just at a, a regular fast food place. Wherever you, wherever yeah. you go, you'll, you'll Exactly. Order. That's what I would order. Last question for us. We're also big wrestling fans. So you like WWE. I don't know if, you, if at any time in your life, have you ever a fan of like WWE, WWF wrestling? No, I don't know if I should say it, but no. <laughs> I never was. I remember growing up in the 50s 
back in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and they would come on a black and white. They would come on Gorgeous George, you know, named you. I don't think I heard of, but they're old veteran players. And, and, you know, he would put on a show, and it was very entertaining, and that's what I got out of it is just watching them. And, and of course, TV was just coming on back in there, so you'd watch anything that came on TV. But I just remember some of those names and, and how big these guys were. They're not as big back then as they are now, but it was something entertaining back there for all of us. So, uh, actually, last, last question. So, you're seeing the Dodger team now uh, with the turnover they had since last year, and the struggles they've gone through. I'm sure you guys went through struggles, but it's normal, right? I mean, how, yeah. how do they how do they come out of that and, and get back well, to the playoffs? Well, you, you know? know, you got 30 teams. Everybody goes through that. It's just how long you're going to go through it. And uh, you know, it's still early in the season. They're the right there. Uh, you know they're trying to get the right combination of players out there, but when some when one of your big players is hurt, it's tough to replace them. No question. You got to weather the storm, and you hope that the uh, your minor league players down there can come up and fill the void for a short length of time. But Dodgers are bringing up some pretty good arms up here that it could stay. But uh, again, everybody goes through it. 162 game schedule, so we'll see how it shakes out in the end. But uh, it's going to be an interesting race because there's teams like Arizona who come on top. Nobody thought about that. Giants have moved back up and the Dodgers. And so there's a lot of teams in other, you know, divisions that are playing well, too, that weren't accounted on. So it's just a, a season where you go through your ups and downs and, and the, the GMs are going to put the best team out on the field. But you have to, uh, like I said, hopefully you weather the storm when, until you get your big guys back in the lineup. Appreciate the time, Bill. This episode of the Bleed Lows podcast has been brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts.